Hey y'all, it's me, Nisi Lynn. I hope you're having a happy Friday. It's about seven o'clock here. I'm trying to get off to a little bit earlier start, but not as early as I wanted. Oh well. It is September the 18th. Um, this is Floss Tube 39. Um, if you're not familiar with Floss Tube, this is uh, their channels about stitching. This one's mainly about cross stitch, maybe a little bit of fabric dyeing, um, and other needle crafts and things now and then, but mainly cross stitch. So if you're new and you're interested in that kind of thing, hang out. If you're not, this probably isn't for you. Um, we will uh, go through a lot of questions and comments at the beginning, and then what I'm working on, what I finished this week, um, a little bit of haul, and then a lot of stitchy kindness this week. Y'all were so sweet and um, made the girls my week and the girls week. They were just over the moon with their first week back from vacation and they had all the fun things. So thank you and we will get right into all our comments and questions. Um, we had talked about pumpkins and pumpkins and um, in Australia that y'all use those for savory. And so it is, I've come to understand that y'all do that like, like I use a sweet potato down here. I do a sweet potato, um, I'll chop it up on a sheet pan with peppers and onion and I put sausage on it for James Williams because he'll eat anything with sausage on there. Gross me out, but whatever. I can't eat sausage. It's already been chewed up and I don't eat pre-chewed food. That ain't my bag. But he loves it and so I'll chop it up on there and literally just roast it in the oven at like 425 or hardly no time enough to soften up the vegetables and he'll eat that and it's fairly, you know, good for you. And so, but that's how I do a sweet potato. And then I'll make a sweet potato pie. Um, I can bake a sweet potato and then put, if I have like leftover pulled pork or something, I'll eat just a sweet potato and he'll eat it with the pulled pork in there. So y'all use a pumpkin like that. So Rosie and Lindy and Asinta and Patchy Pony, um, a lot of y'all, said that y'all roast it um, and to force the caramelization, y'all mash them. Um, and I think it was Jacinta that said her grandma used to make a grandma pie out of the little round pumpkins, which, you know, the little sweet pumpkins here is what you would use if you were gonna make a pie, but very few people do that anymore. Most people just use, you know, the little can of pumpkin, which isn't as good, but I'll be the first one to admit that I'm too lazy to mash the pumpkin anymore. Maria said in Spain um, that she puts, makes a pumpkin soup, which really sounds good. Um, but I don't know why nobody does that anymore. Everybody just uses it in the can. I mean, I know why, because it's easy, but I might try to do that and this year and make myself do that because it does make her, the pies really better if you do it. So uh, Sherry and Becca had said that, why didn't I do a stitch with me where I just, you know, told stories and chatted and why I stitched? I can't figure out how you do, like I've seen where two people have each other on the screen and like they're chatting back and forth, but I can't figure out where you put like the camera and all that when you're just stitching by yourself. You just put it on your face. And so I don't know where I would do it unless I just like sat right here and then, but then you couldn't see what I was stitching on. But if you put it here and you see what I'm stitching on, then you're just kind of looking at the back of my head. So. Uh, somebody help me out with that because um, I don't understand all the ins and outs of how all that works. So, um, and a uh, husband taught her son to pee outside in the hus at the hunt cabin because you know it does help keep the animals away because they don't like humans. So if you pee outside around your hunting place, that's why where you're hunting, um, like your hunting stand. If you're hunting in a stand, you shouldn't pee there. Uh, but um, he forgot to tell him when they go back home. You know. Don't do that so that you you, know, you get calls from the neighbors and things. So when you go back to the house in town, you got to remember to say that, okay? We have had um, several, and we'll get to another one down here because I got another story about, yeah, that can get into a big problem. Okay, we are going to do some anniversaries here real quick. Y'all are always fascinating. Y'all are always fascinating me with these. Anniversaries. Mary Jo, 47 years. Maria, 43. My writing, y'all. 
518 Stitcher 27, Sprink Sprinklestein Stitches 20, Peggy 41, Misty 21, Nancy, Husband 27, Wife 32, which both of those are long-term commitments and I think that's, wow. Kathy, this one was really good, 14 times three. So 14 is her good number. So number three, if you're sitting there knocking on 14, you better watch your P's and Q's. MK 36, Judy 34, Brenda 53, Karen 37, Diane 25, um, and then this is the one I wanted to say. Becky had hers for 61 and then she lost them. So Becky, I am so sorry. I know that that is a long, long time. That is a long, long time to have somebody and then lose them. That is a huge change. So I will be sending all the love um, and the sweet memories your way and some peace because that's a long time to make a change, good or bad. And you seemed, um, you said it was good. So I'm very, I'm very sorry for that. And, but that is, that's incredible. 61 years is an incredible thing to do. So y'all always amaze me with all those, um, cause that's work. I don't care what anybody says, that's work. You've been putting in the work on that. So congratulations, that's amazing. Jerilyn um, had mentioned that the Hawk Run Hollow, there is a pound sign, HRH Halloween, and um, FB, there's a Facebook group, Hawk Run Hollow South. So once I've decided to brave up and bust mine out, I'm going to uh, get on those. So, but if any of you are working on those and y'all haven't got in those groups, she was sweet enough to share those two. Um, Lori called her grandma Murr as a baby, and so many of y'all were sweet enough to tell about grandma names. Grandma Straw and Augie and Oma and all these. And I loved it and I was afraid if I listed them all, we'd never get done today. So I didn't list all of them that I wanted to. But it's funny how names stick and you don't know where they came from. Good old girl and Papa, good old girl's brother lived with him and his name was Howard. And he worked at the, um, Fort Worth newspaper, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And he'd never married, he'd had a long-term girlfriend and um, she, if I remember right, in my child brain, she was murdered. Um, there was, she was killed in her apartment while he was at work. And um, he never dated again, never anything. But for some reason, we always called him Hewick. He was called Hewick, and I have asked, of course I didn't ever think to ask good old girl before she was gone, but I've asked my daddy, and I've asked uh, my Aunt Pat, and then my Aunt Lynn has passed also, and so nobody, nobody knows. So that's what's funny. So if you have one of those names that you don't know, ask, because now I can never know why we called him Hewick. No clue why we called him Hewitt. Good old girl always called him Hewitt. We always called him Hewitt. No clue why. No clue. So, if you have one of those names, ask. Because if not, you're liable to never find out. And if you're like me, it will wart you to death. Sally says she starches her fabric real heavy. She lets it air dry, mostly air dry. So, it's just damp. And then she just presses it. Not not pushes, just presses, okay? So I'm gonna try that with some of mine. I've had better luck this week. I've left my contacts out um, when I've been stitching and just then put on my cheaters. I think a lot of my problem right now maybe is allergies and my eyes are gunked up. So that has helped some. So I've got a little bit more done on my, um, my prettier fabric because I think my eyes being gunked up has made them super unhappy. And let me tell you right now, that will be the screen grab That'll be the screen grab that YouTube wants to use. I do not know what about the gods of YouTube, but if any of y'all know what in the world causes them to pick, I, I promise y'all one day I'm gonna put a reel together of the things they have suggested as the screen grabs because y'all know I have this crazy face that makes these crazy things. And the things it has chosen over this year, well, they should just, they should just Play it in places where people are super sad because you could not stop laughing. 
it it's like a comedy reel good grief but that'll be the one it chooses I guarantee you I promise oh um, Lisa I love this when her grandbaby got you know you have your grandbabies and you try to always connect with them right but when she turned 13 you know they get to that age and you know they think they're a little too cool for school and they you know no more hugging and kissing you in public and everything and um, so she started making an effort to get interested in things that she was interested in. So, you know, she listened to a little Post Malone so she could throw a little lyric out every now and then and things like this. And so that was shocking you know, her granddaughter that she, you know, knew something she was interested in. And so now um, the little sister of the, thir the one that got 13, now the little sister has come along but the little sister wants to learn to stitch. So now the little sister says that she's favorite, you know, and that's hilarious because my kids, when they were all like high school age, they would get the phones of daddy and Annie and them, and they would, they would put favorite grandchild. They would change the name in the phone. And I think in their, some of their phones, they still say when the phone rings, one of the grandkids still says favorite grandchild because they never quit changing it, which is hilarious. But they would get in there and change the phone to say favorite grandchild when one of them rang and then the other one would get it and change it, which is hilarious. But I love that she's learning to stitch and I especially love that you made an effort to stay connected to, um, I guess my thing is not, you didn't try to make her come to you when she started pulling back a little bit, you made the effort to go to her. And I think that's, I think that says a lot. And I think it said a lot to her. And I think that's, I think that with kids, I think that's what we have to do is at some point they're going to get, because to separate, you know, you have to separate from parent to become self and which is parent is grandparent also. And so I think at that point, um, you have to go to them a little bit because you want them to fully function. You want them to be adults and you want them to be able to go on and function fully and become themselves. I wanted my kids to be able to walk out of this house and do what they wanted to do and needed to do. And I realized that they couldn't, they can't still, you know, as horrible as it sounds safe, they can't still be on the tit and, and do that. It's just not possible. So they have to separate from you. So it's painful, but they do, they have to do that. So at that point, when they start separating from you, it does hurt. But then if you make that effort to not get in their space, but stay connected with them a little bit. And, and I think that, um, I think that says a lot, Lisa. And that really, um, that really touched me. And I think, I thought that was really special that you did that. Um, Sherry says, uh, one, two, three stitch has a full wool floss collection. So anybody looking for wool floss, one, two, three stitch, she said has a good one. Um, Sarah said Stitcher's Garden in Albuquerque, New Mexico still has some casting a spell. I know some of y'all said that, um, had said they were kind of getting, some places were running out of them. She saw them at Stitcher's Garden in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tammy B says the Bright Tech Light View Pro 2-in-1 Light is fabulous. She loves it, but she's also thinking about dropping the cash on the Craft Optics glasses. She says they're pricey but their prescription and um, she's thinking about getting some because they're, you know, really good and their prescription, they're made for you so that they would be exactly what you need. So um, I'm gonna look into some of that, um, especially the light. I know, you, you know, I've told y'all we're gonna have to do something because you know, I just use the, I don't know if you can see it over there. Um, you may not can. No, I guess it's not turned far enough right now. I've showed it last, it's just a light light is all I use. Okay. Barb, lost in floss, said she was the queen of losing it, but at laughing, not at getting mad. Micah had an incident this last week when they were on vacation. And like I said, Annie has to keep Daddy and I separated at events lots of times. She'll sit between us because Daddy and I will get to acting out. And she'll say, or if she forgets, she'll lean over and she'll say, do I need to sit between you two? Because we'll get at weddings and stuff. We'll get to, 
I'm sorry. I just get to acting out. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go on too long at your wedding, I'm not gonna act good. I'll try to keep it quiet, but I can't act good that long. If you're gonna have 77 solos and oh my lord, trumpet solos, cello solos, and you're gonna have 78 poem readings, and then you know you're gonna have. I, I'm sorry, it can only go on so long that I can sit there. I understand this is your ceremony, and I understand this is your special day. And you're you're inclined you. It is your option to do whatever you want. But when you invite me, you need to understand. My attention span is not as long as your ceremony. So I'm gonna I'm gonna misbehave at some point. Now, I won't be loud, but if you think I'm going to sit there and be just, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's too much. It's too much. So, Barb, I am feeling you, and Michael was feeling you this week. They went to Gulf Shores, and then they came back through NOLA, and they stayed there a couple of days, and they took the girls to the aquarium. And, you know, everything is by, um, you know, you have to have a reservation right now. And so the aquarium opened, you know, and they were there about 15 minutes early. I think it opens at 10. And they were there just, you know, about 15 minutes early and they were sitting on the bench outside. And if you've ever been down there at the aquarium, there is around the outside, there's really like not anything, okay? And especially not early in the morning. And Aria Kyle, who, you know, just turned four last week, the week four says, well, the week of her birthday, she was down there, says that she has to go TT. And Mike said, oh, baby, we're about to get to go in, you know, and we'll teach you then. And she said, well, I really need to go. And she said, I know, baby, but there's no place around here. We'll go in in just a second. And y'all, she's been potty trained forever, forever. She was easy to potty train. She's been potty trained forever. And if you've ever been to the aquarium, out in front, they have these wire benches, you know, just little wrought iron benches, okay? And of course, all the families are sitting on these wrought iron benches waiting, you know, for the gates to open, you know, and you get in and Mike says I hear water hitting the pavement and I realize that my adorable beautiful little child is sitting there on that bench and TTN just TTN just TTN and she said, of course, every other family is looking at me like I've showed up with a feral child that I just, you know, drug out of the jungle or something. And she said, Barb, she was you. She said, she just could not stop laughing. She said, I couldn't stop laughing. She said, I could not stop laughing. I couldn't stop. I could not stop laughing. And she said, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. She said, of course, we had to go buy our little dress to put on and everything. And, uh, but she said, I couldn't stop laughing at that point. I just could not. She said, cause she told me, but you know, she said, there's no place to go. So yes, I understand the losing it laughing as well as losing it getting mad. Um, Jill said, uh, we could be, when we get taken down that we're going to be cellmates. Maybe we can be cellmates. Um, we'll be cellmates for life. I think maybe those will get t-shirts cellmates for life, losing it and cellmates for life, losing it on the front cellmates for life on the back. Okay, um, Leslie um, says she loves the drawn thread, but she doesn't like the specialty stitches. I love the specialty stitches, and I've been thinking about this. I wonder if it's because I learned to embroider before I learned to cross stitch. So you have like the specialty stitches, because you do the satin stitch, and you do the lazy daisy, and like this. Um, so I wonder if that's why Myself and some people love the drawn thread. So if any of y'all that love the drawn thread embroidered first, holler and let me know because I'm wondering, after you said that, Leslie, it got me thinking about why maybe I love them and some people love them and some people don't. So maybe that's why. So if any of y'all love the specialty stitches and you embroidered first, or you think that's it, could be yes or no, holler and let me know because that got me thinking about that. Teresa says, um, on Flannel Jamie's farm, floss tube number five, she gives a great lesson on ironing or pressing because you know when you, um, you're not supposed to, you know, like this, you're supposed to just press your pieces. 
So any of y'all are starting finishing, you don't need, you don't like you're doing a pair of britches or a shirt or something, you will distort, you can distort your threads, especially if it's something loose like a linen, you can distort it. Your Ada, not as much because it's a tighter type of a weave, you know, it's like this, but your linen, you know, it's kind of like this anyway. So flannel jammies farm number five, she said she gives a real good lesson on ironing starting at 12 minutes and 40 seconds. So any of y'all that are just not getting into finishing or curious about that, thank you, um, Teresa, because that is something good to know. Um, okay, Lords is looking for a DMC variegated conversion chart. And she wants the other way because she has a lot of DMC, but some of them don't give the other direction. You know what I'm saying? They don't give the... They give the, like they'll say gassed, but some charts don't give the other number for the DMC. So she's trying to find some that go like the reverse. So, I, and I know what she's saying, because I had one time, that time that did that, and I had a hard time because the ones I found, like they weren't in the right order. They weren't like in alphabetical order. It was just kind of willy-nilly. So if anybody knows of some good ones of those, I've never had a great luck finding any either. Um, I don't know, it is it is difficult. I usually just do kind of a floss toss in that I just kind of go, it. look at the chart, it looks like a medium green, and I just go in there in my DMC box and go medium green like this. And I need then I need a darker green than that, and I grab that one. So that's kind of how I do that one. But if anybody knows of any um, hauler, um, holler about that and and finishing tutorial that's all my note says to myself Lord so, oh Lord have mercy I think you were asking which one and I, did I send it to you I think I wrote it down but I forgot to write it down here I think I already sent you that if I didn't holler back at me uh. Greta wanted to see some, uh, how I stitch in hand, and um, I will I will fold up one of these after we after I do it after we after I show it I'll fold it up if I don't forget I think I showed it a little bit last week, and also there is a good Jean Ferris video on stitching in hand. Um, but like I said, if you what you want to do is for me is fold it and get all the weight in my hand that I'm holding with. If you're a right-handed stitcher, if you hold your needle with your right hand. If all the weight is in your left hand, then you can just work your needle like this, okay? But all this weight over here, then you can just work it just like you're in a hoop, okay? All this weight's over here, this hand's free to work, and so this is just like your hoop. I don't, I don't over tight, I don't pull over tight, so that's something, that's the only thing you have to adjust with that you have to change and get used to in your head is that, <clears throat> is getting used to that. Um, Oh, Deb says Sue Spargo's website has great wool floss and really good wool products on that. So Sue Spargo, she says it's really great for that. Oh, and y'all need to go look at this. Sharon um, in Australia says they have blue or Queensland blue pumpkins that they use. I went and looked at these, y'all. These things are beautiful. These pumpkins are gorgeous. These are beautiful pumpkins you've ever seen. So go look those up. They're so beautiful. So thank you, Sharon, for sharing that because I looked at those and they're so pretty. Okay, okay, Leslie sent me and Leslie at Fat Cat Flossing, okay, y'all know her. She says Cynthia at Stitching in the Light is doing the Great Pump, Pound Sound, the Great Pumpkin South, and the proceeds go to the Freedom Shields Foundation. So if y'all will go look at Stitching in the Light, and then she, that's who the Great Pumpkin South goes through her, and then it is kind of like to go toward that. So I am looking into that and y'all go look into that and that's who that's gonna go to. So I'm looking, I did not get that washed yet. Oh, I thought I could get it washed this morning when I was getting ready, but I didn't. Uh, Betty says quilt shops that carry wool usually carry great wool floss too. So look in those two things kind of go together. Oh, and Jackie Tremblay, all the words this time for all the shares. Y'all go look in the comments. Jackie wrote a great story with all the words, but it was I couldn't copy it all down. 
Catherine is looking for an LNS near Maybank, Texas. Maybank is real close to me. Um, you're right out there past Cedar Creek, Camp, all around that area. Yours is probably gonna be the closest as mine is gonna be the Stitch Niche over to Arlington. There's one in Plano, but I ain't going up 75 for anything. Now you, Catherine, you do you, but I ain't getting on Central Expressway. I don't even get on to go see my baby up there, so I sure ain't gonna get over to go buy some thread. So I would get on 20 and shoot over to the Stitch Niche. Um, it's right up North 20. Um, and it's fabulous, I love it, but it's the Stitch Niche in Arlington and we it's probably the closest to both of us. So, and we're like neighbors, so we're not far apart, Catherine. Now, Michelle said, now I loop back to the story, I didn't wanna forget it. Michelle said she has three boys and they had taught them to pee outside. And then Jean, her grandson, they taught them out to, that, to do that too. I mean, lots of us do out here that live in the country, you teach kids to pee outside. Especially little boys, it's easy to train them, to potty train them because they wanna pee outside because it's fun. You can teach them to shoot the Cheerio in the potty and then pee outside. And that usually for a boy is enough to get them going, right? Well, then there was talk this morning, and I ain't, I ain't gonna call your name out because you know, um, that there was a incident about, not with Michelle, but someone else that the, there was some problems with the differentiation between peeing and pooping outside. And that they had to, you know, clear that up. Well, when Dax was a little old bitty and he was at the house and um, he kind of had a bad diaper rash and we'd take his diaper off and we we're on the back porch and everybody was overeating and everything and we just changed him and just let him run around a minute, you know, get some air on his bobo to dry his diaper rash up. And he was running around and just running across the back patio. And I had a big old back patio like this at the other house too. And he's just walking right along and just poops while he's walking. And James Williams just couldn't, lost it. He could not believe it. And we're all dying, you know, of course, clean it up, everything, clean it up really good, but we're all dying. Cause you know, it's like, well, at least we know it's like a good cow dog, you know. A good cow dog ain't gonna stop to poop. A good cow dog's gonna poop on the run and just keep on working, right? And we're all dying laughing, but James Williams was ruined, ruined. He was just, could not believe it. And we laughed and laughed and laughed about that. And I, when you mentioned that, that, that took me right straight back to that moment with the low Dax and his little necky butt just walking across that patio and just pooped while he was walking, just like a little, he was a good little cow dog, boy, he didn't even break stride, just ch -ch 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 kept on going. Which James Williams brings me to Kimi in this mask. Kimi, Aria had to go get her four-year-old shots yesterday. And Kimi, when Aria's not here, likes to get her little sewing machine. So she made her sister this little mask on her sewing machine and then hand sewed that little daisy in the center for her sister. So she made that for her sister while she was getting her shots. But we've been laughing at James Williams I should have brought a picture of him over here, y'all. But one thing, he's giant. But his ears, he has big ears. And they're evidently, I never have noticed because his ears are big, so you don't pay no more attention than that. But when I put my mask on, you know, it's like, it goes like right here. I got to laughing at him because when he puts his mask on, it's like it covers up his eyeballs like this. So if he puts his mask on his ears, it's going like this. And I got to laughing at him last weekend about that mask. Y'all, I could not stop. He ain't got no sense. I was done. The last thing before we go on to others, this. This is Power Lips Fluid by New Color. This is not what I have on this morning, but this, Micah either gave it to me or Hannah Coe, my Hannah Coe gave it to me. Um, it goes on and it, then it like dries and I can put this on and wear my mask. Cause let me tell you what, coronavirus, I ain't going out with no lipstick just because of you and that mask. So um, if you have like grandkids or nieces or something, they can tell you about, probably the Kylie Jenner stuff probably does this too. I don't know, but it's probably super expensive, but this may be too. I don't know, I didn't buy it. Uh, one of them gave it to me. But at Ulta or somewhere, if you tell them, I need something I can put on under that mask that once I put it on and it dries, it's gonna stay on and not be smearing all over my face so I look like the Joker, okay? So this, you need something like this because 
I ain't gonna go out with no lipstick. And I ain't gonna take that mask off and look like the Joker either. So you need something like this. This is important. Okay, on to Stitchy Kindness. Y'all were so sweet this week. Um, not just to me, to the girls. Myself and the girls. We got cards from Julie. I got this beautiful card from Julie with a nice note in it. And then the girls got these beautiful cards from Julie. And they were so excited because Kimi loves pink and Aria loves purple. And they were sparkly and pink and purple. Pink and purple. So they were so excited. So thank you so much, Julie. They were so excited about that. And then they got these from, these are Colleen's card. I wanna be sure they hadn't stacked anything in here that's gonna fall out in my coffee over here, in my water and coffee. These from Colleen, she made them these beautiful cards. And y'all, I had to go, I had to go gather all this stuff back up. I've been trying to get them to not get it completely lost so I could show it to y'all on Friday, but I thought they should be able to play with it. So, so they had these cards from Colleen and I kind of spread them out throughout the week so they could open them. We didn't open anything on Monday because they were kind of just drained after last week. So thank you, Colleen, for these cards. They have loved their cards and they have made uh, cards and things to send because they have been having so much fun. Then uh, we got a package from Sharon all the way from Scotland. We got this beautiful card. And y'all, these are the Hands Across the Sea cards that have the pattern on the back. I put my hand on it like that, but it has a pattern on the back if you get these <clears throat> cards from her, excuse me. And it tells what sampler it comes out of. And it's like, this is the sampler on the front end. It tells you the name of it in case you wanna get it. And then it has like, this is the little, this one right here is a little excerpt, I think from this one. It's like really cool. And so she sent the girls these three books, which we have since read twice. Um, Peppa Meets the Queen, which then we had to have a big discussion about why we don't have a queen here. Well, that's a good question, isn't it? That is a really good question, in my opinion. Peter Rabbit Club and the one they love, Nessie Needs New Glasses. They thought this one was fabulous. So. And then Sharon sent us, me these beautiful fabrics with the long-haired Highland cows and the beautiful long-haired deer, which they found everything fascinating that, that things at Sharon's house have long hair, that ours don't have long hair. So they thought that was so fun that Sharon's things at Sharon's house have long hairs and ours don't have long hairs. That was fascinating to them completely. So they, thank you so much, Sharon. They were so excited and I was so excited. We had so much fun with that. Then let's see here. Um, I wanna move this one over here before I break it. Laura sent me this beautiful mug from Minnesota. She is my Minnesota stitching sister. And I laughed at Kimi because I opened it up. Here's the beautiful card. And I opened it up and I'm reading, and I'm reading the card, right? So I'm opening it up and I'm like this. And she says, Shug, look at this. And she's holding the envelope. I said, isn't that a beautiful peacock baby? And she goes, no, Shug, look at this. And she's looking at the inside. The inside of this thing is so beautiful. And she locked in on that right away. Their mother loves peacocks. So she was just fascinated by the beautiful card and that the inside of the envelope was as beautiful as the outside. So thank you so much. I am, I love me some mugs and I use them. I, well, I'm drink coffee all the time. So the girls would have tea sometimes, but I drink coffee every day. So thank you so much, Laura. This is beautiful. And it makes me think of all my um, Ren Fair friends who I did not get to see this year. And I hope everybody's okay in those industries that did not get to open. So um, I'm super concerned about all that right now. That is horrifying. Now, Colleen sent a package to the girls and I. And boy, when Colleen sends you a package, boy, you're going to know you got something. So I had to try to, um, I had to try to keep this a little bit neat this week. So she sent, um, Kimi and I'm going to go to Colleen's house, try to get some sewing lessons because first off was this beautiful zipper pouch, fully lined, Everything is perfection. 
every seam perfect and the little this one and the little I'm gonna try to unload it here Elmo pillowcase how cute is that so I talked them into um, letting me keep these over here and they just didn't play with them very much and then Disney pens which their daddy has some of. So they were so excited that they had some of the things that their daddy has some of now. And beautiful cards, handmade cards. And then Ari Kyle got this. But look, it even has banana trim on there with the little sock monkeys. And y'all, I was just shocked. And this drawstring bag Look at this, that even has a flat bottom. I mean, what the heck? I was, Colleen, you're amazing. Amazing. So cute. So I asked them if they could just, um, pl just play with it real light like, and they finally agreed that they would just let me keep it over here until, um, till Friday. And then it's no holds barred. A beautiful card for her and then two more pins. So, they were so excited and so fun today, but they did agree to let me just put it to the side until after Friday because um, Ari Kyle fills all kinds of bags up every day and takes things home with her every day, bags full of things. She is like a little bag lady. Like if she had a grocery cart that she could push in and out of the Jeep every day, no kidding, she fills it up continually. It's insane. And then Colleen sent me all these things. First, this beautiful rooster bag, this project bag. How cute is that? Which here again was a huge hit because we went to Bailey and Keeley's this week and they picked up tail feathers out of that rooster. They have a rooster that's part fighting, fighting rooster from somebody. And so he has the long, beautiful tail feathers, right? And when he loses those tail feathers, they gather those things up and they carried them all over the yard. So. This is gorgeous and they loved that it had their baby's rooster on it as they call it, baby's rooster. This beautiful pouch, fully lined again. Colleen sewing is just incredible. Beautiful pouch, a mask, which we can all always use these. We're having to wear them every day. Thank you with the little owls, so cute. Aria said, shut, that's so cute. And Kleenexes, which with my allergies in the ragweed, Colleen, you must know. Thank you so much because, yeah. And this beautiful card. I don't know if there's anything Colleen doesn't do. Beautiful, beautiful card. So thank you so much, Colleen. We had so much fun with all this stuff. They were ecstatic. And then here we have all this. Let me find this card here. This card here from, because I don't want this to fall out. Deborah sent me this beautiful, 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 and I would call it a raven or, I'm not sure. She says, it's, does it say it's a crow? I don't know if it's a raven or a crow. Maybe it's a crow because the bill's kind of yellowish. But it is beautiful. It says it's a watercolor by, oh my gosh, my glide, my glasses. Ellen Morrow. It is beautiful. She sent postage money, which is not necessary, but Deborah, thank you so much. She is so sweet. And then all these things, this bag of notions, which I did not dare open because, well, we were just talking about Aria loving to fill up her little bags of things. I, I use these little rings continually, needles, which I'm always in need of. These adorable little scissors, and then this little needle tin. How cute is this? I don't think I've ever even had one of those before. That is the cutest thing ever. Yeah, I kept those um, inside the red pouch, um, inside the little baggie because Aria Kyle loves her some tiny things and loves to put bags inside bags inside bags and carry bags. And then she sent these charts. And I was just shocked. And I, we had, I loaned Deborah a chart and all this just because of that. So she was so, I'm just shocked. Deborah, thank you so much. Some of these I'd never seen. 
Elizabeth Jones sampler by Lottie Da. This thing is beautiful and I had never seen this before. It has all these little like swans and deers down here and all these animals. I had never seen this thing, but it says it's Elizabeth Jones by Lottie Da and it only has like 12 colors in it. So, and it's stitch count on it is 221 by 223. So it's not like gigantimous. So that one might be a good, if you want to do the next step up, you know, in samplers and move up to the next size. She sent me farmhouse, which I have these to do. So this will definitely be a giveaway. I haven't started this yet, but I have this series. So, um, this will definitely be a share and it is beautiful. I don't know if this is the anniversary of the heart series. I think this is number five in it, but it is so beautiful. I love blackbirds and I love that whole series. The soweth sampler, whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap by birds of a feather. It is beautiful, 81 by 81. It's pretty solid in there, but it is gorgeous. Did I get that where y'all can see it good? I just got these and opened them. So um, I think they came yesterday. And then this one I'd never seen. The Haynes Sampler by Annie B's with this beautiful pink house. Look at that pink house and the that border. That is beautiful. And this center section here with all these, um, like kind of like a little garden right in the center. The urns. Just gorgeous. And then this little thing says, the Lord made the family and within it he dwells. Just gorgeous. So, Deborah, thank you so much. Yeah, so we had a big, um, all the kindness this week. Thank y'all so much. I was just, I'm always shocked and this week was extra shocking. Um, wow, y'all are just so nice, so sweet to us. And like I said, it made the girls week after their, their anticlimactic week of being home from vacation. So. I had a little bit of haul. I got um, my autumn ABCs and the threads for it. So I'm gonna get it going. Little House Needleworks. And I've got my threads going here. Got my threads pulled out for it. Um, Shelly sent me those. And then I had her send me Midnight Ride. I had this chart. I'm sorry, let me clarify that. I had Midnight Ride, I've had it for a long time had this chart, but I've never had the fabric or anything. So I had her get me the fabric and the threads. There, so I can I can do this one. What I need some of y'all to tell me is this box here by Lone M Lane. It's a beautiful box. And it looks like it just pops up like it has a little ledge in there. It's kind of pricey, okay? So if any of y'all have this box and y'all really like it and it's worth the price, holler and let me know because I've never had one and I've only had, I only just buy the ones like, you know, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, those things. So this one is, but it, this one obviously is much more well-made and it is beautiful, but it is much more expensive. So holler if y'all have one and you love it and it's worth the price because it looks beautiful, but it is a lot more expensive and let me know if it's worth getting it because it is kind of an investment. And, but it looks like you can kind of pop it up out of there like you don't glue it in. So like you just lay it in there and then you can take it out and put another one in there for another season. And if I'm right about that, somebody let me know because that's what it looks like. Okay, I need y'all to help me here. I um, Stitching in Brooklyn, I told y'all last week, decide, designed the piece for um, Queen of Losing It, which is me. And I wanted to start it this week. I dyed a piece of fabric and then I decided it's too dark. So I have not got to start it because I can't, I have, then I decided, so then I have another piece I might use. Uh, this is a piece I dyed and I don't know. I can't decide if it's too dark because I'm just gonna do it all black, the design all black on here, or if I should use this piece, which I've had in my stash for like a Coons age and it has a little bit of sparkle in there. Can y'all see that? I think it's a, it's a silk weaver, like 20 count. So it'll be like really big on here. Like this. So it's got greens and yellows and all this. Or if I should use my, this one. 
So, y'all holler, because I can't decide this week. I've start, started, I've started to start it 15 times, and I can't decide. So, somebody y'all help me out so I can get that going, because I, the design is so cute, and I'm going to make it into um, a uh, either a pillow or a frame and sit it on James Williams' side of the bed. Just so in case he forgets. Also, um, two floss tubers that I got to watch this week that I have not seen before. Y'all have tried to tell me how to find her a million times. Mama loves you, GB Michelle. Y'all, I have looked for her for weeks. I keep getting stainers. Y'all know I tell y'all my tech skills are bad, non-existent, terrible. I finally found her. She's fabulous. She's fabulous. She's in Wales. Her voice is beautiful. It's very calming. Um, it, it's just so rhythmic and calming. And she has beautiful projects. Um, she has all kinds of uh, projects. She does a whip parade at one point, things she's got going. Um, just beautiful. Beautiful projects, beautiful lady, um, beautiful voice. She talks about some of her dyeing and stuff. She does a lot of her own fabric dyeing and things. So you can learn stuff from her and see beautiful things and hear her beautiful voice. So she is a win-win. Mama loves you, GB Michelle. She's fabulous. Then, so this is my Michelle week because last week was Georgia week, evidently. This is, and I also been meaning to say, made by Michelle McGraw. I catch her from time to time. I love her. And she has one this week where she talks about those little cross stitch cords she has. Well, they're not little. I don't know why I say little. But I know a lot of people don't like gluing things on their, on their cross stitch. And she has those little, those boards that she has put pegs in that, I mean, and you don't have to have a master carpenter to make them either. But she talks about making those so you can switch your cross stitch pieces out on those. So that, um, she goes into more detail in her latest floss tube about those. I love watching her. I love her pieces and stuff. She, her little animals come walking by from time to time. So I love seeing that too. So made by Michelle McGraw and Mama Loves You, GB Michelle this week. And then y'all need to help me on my um, stitching in Brooklyn piece, which fabric to use because uh, I, my brain is just, I don't know. Here we go with the whips. I got all, I got the whips this week. Everybody got a little love. So I'm going to have to get up first because we're going to start with May Health and Peace and it is gigantimous. And I just, I'm, for some reason, remember to wear my little Jeep Collins piece this morning. I haven't worn it out in a while since I, we were going to talk about the art. So May Health and Peace got a little love. I got some more done on the border on this side and another flower. I was going to keep working over here, but I'm thinking I may be one off. And so rather than try to tackle that right now, I just said forget about it and moved on to that side and worked on the border and got a flower and some more of the border done over there. Y'all know I love this piece and I'm going to be sad when it's done because it is nice. And I worked on hand in this piece the whole time um, this week. I just said forget the hoop and I rolled it and I was so much happier with it since I had my... Um, contacts out and that seemed to be fabulous so it is this piece here and I told y'all last time here's the threads for it and that's I told y'all that's what I do if I've got that I just buy for a particular sampler I just whack the bottoms off because on linen I don't want them long I don't want them to get a knot on the back it's by my lady's needle the attic has it in Arizona and my LNS uh, the stitch niche in Arlington has it and I love it. I'm loving stitching on it. It is beautiful. It is just beautiful. Then I uh, worked a little bit more on my Halloween Quaker by from the art, from the heart needle art by Wendy. This guy here, Halloween Quaker, and it's from the heart needle art by Wendy. These were some of the ones that were the uh, 4K giveaways, and of course I had to get some for myself. And these are the call for threads, except I added in um, the red plum. This one here. Because I needed, it needed some purple for me. So I added in some purple and I, so I've got DL and then I'll do the W in purple for my initials. I did the little berries or blooms on here in purple. I did the heart in purple. And so um, that just gives a little contrast to me. I, for me, it needed a little something on the other side of the color wheel than that orange, but that's just me. 
Last week I was laughing at myself because I was like, why I got this big hollow right here? Why I got this hollow right here? Because for some reason in my brain, I had finished that bird, but I hadn't. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me that a brand new brain wouldn't fix. So, but even him, I just rolled him up and worked in hand this week. I, and without the contacts in, I did so much better. So, hmm. it must've just been my dunky eyes last week. I did a little more on my Patriotic House here. Waxing Moon Patriotic House Trio. And y'all know I'm doing them all in a line and I crunched them all in um, because I'm gonna make them into a little drum. Ann showed me hers in a little drum, our sweet Ann Seely, and I loved it. And so those are my threads. They're not the called for, they're just what I had. I just did a little floss toss and so I got my quilts finished. I got a little bit of this border done and I started down this way with it. So I'm, I'll need to go this way with it and finish out this border. And then I got my flag over here. So it's getting, it's getting near. It's getting really near and I'm loving this piece. It's just on a piece of uh, 28 count dyed in Monaco. Um, this is what I get from Down Sunshine Lane. She always has it. I don't know. Everybody else tends to not have it a lot, but Down Sunshine Lane on, online always has this. So she is my always go-to for that. She always has it. Um, signs from heaven. Here again, I just said forget it and worked in hand this week without my contacts in and life was good. I am loving this. I opted to do it on the dark. Um, it is on coffee from Be Stitch Me. It is a beautiful fabric. And once I hear again, once I took my dang contacts out and just put on my cheaters. It was a present from Lori and here's all the threads and I am just love, love, loving it. Um, I got all my words done and then I'm starting on my border here down so um if you look i mean once you get the words done that's a big so you know all the rest is just in i guess the other kind of third over here of course there's more stitching but it's more less surface area so all my words are done but i'm loving this on this darker fabric and i'm thinking those um aspen trees are really gonna really gonna show up nice on there like that then um, the last one is my hedgerow sampler. Here again, I've still not made a copy of this, so I have to open this up every time. I'm my own worst enemy. Hedgerow House by Jane Greenoff. And I want somebody to tell me, I'm disturbed by this cue not having a cue. This cue not having a tail here, my cue's gonna have to have a tail. I can't live that life. So if any of y'all, the rest of y'all struggling with that right now, my cue has to have a tail. It has to. Some things I can just go with, but this I cannot go with. So I'm about getting over to the cue, and it's going to have to have a tail. So I've just been rocking along on the letters here. So I think I was just started on the M last time and I the D. So I've got these letters done, and then the N and part of the O. So the E to the end, the E to the J, and then the N and the O here. And I'm using a variegated for this. I'm not sure I'm gonna leave that. That's why I've kind of left this here. I don't know, I was just gonna use the over dyed and then use the back stitching, but I don't know if that's gonna work for me or not. So I'm just thinking on that. But I'm loving this. Uh, my blue border is Freedom. And I love that on there. And then 4205 is what I'm using for this. And I love that. I love that it shows a lot of irrigation on there. And then I'm gonna take, slip this guy off here real quick. I didn't put a lot of pins on him. So I could kind of slip him off here and show y'all how I roll it up to stitch real quick. So. If I was gonna start stitching on my O here. So I've got this other here. And I've just rolled it, okay, like this. 
I've got my fingers like this on the back and I've got them like this on the front. And I would just be stitching just like this. I know it's weird because I can't figure out how to get the angle, but I would be holding it like this and then just stitching with this hand. So I'm holding it. This is just like your hoop on the back. This is just like your hoop on the front. And I'm just stitching right here, this side of this O right there. And then you just move it along. You know, then you just roll up when you go to the P and you start the next little area. Does that make sense? That's how I do, that's how I do mine. And now if this is too much, I will usually have this kind of folded over like this too. I won't leave that much hanging. I'll just fold this over one time and put a little clamp on here at the top. You just put a little clamp on this at the top and even at the bottom to keep from having to have so much over there. But you want all the weight in this hand. And so if it's, if you get to the other side, just flip it over, you know what I'm saying? So you're just gonna flip it over this way and then your crosses will be the same way. Now you can't turn it sideways, but as long as you go this way, your legs, your, as long as your bottom leg is the same direction and your top leg is the same direction, your, your crosses all be the same, you know? So that's, that's what I've always done. That works for me and I like working that way so much better. It works so much better for me. Now I have finishes. Woohoo! Um, a quick finish was this guy. And here is his little thingies. Sorry, I had to scooch everything down. I was, I was out of counter space today. Go figure. With a counter nine miles long, amount of counter space. Um, this little guy, I grabbed him out when I couldn't decide on my fabric for my queen of losing it. I nearly lost it over queen of losing it. Lizzie Kate treat time. I found some of my Lizzie Kates last week and I'll, I'll try to get out the old ones that I stitch and show you the difference because I stitched them on real bright colored Ada when I stitched them years ago. Super bright colors. Um, not even the call for. These aren't the call for either. But I got out some of my scraps of linen and just got, these are some of the called for colors. I didn't have them all, but they're close, some of them. And then just a scrap of Ada and stitched him on here. I'm doing 2020 over one down here. But it makes, it just makes it totally different look. So these are some of my favorite little things. They're so cute. Um, I'm either gonna make them into a little ornament for the tree right over there, or I'm gonna make them into a little pillow, like a bowl filler. I'm not sure which, but either way, he's just perfect on a little scrap, a little scraps of linen that I'd never throw away. And I'll do him that way. But he, um, he filled the gap when I couldn't get my fabric like I wanted on Queen of Losing It. And then, Dun, dun, dun. And I'll have to have a finish of Palooza this weekend because I finished Welcome Autumn by Drawn Thread. And I, you know, I love this. I changed my blue out. It came with all the silks from drawnthread.com. I didn't use my blues. I mean, I didn't use the brown. I used the blue. And now, now I'm done and this is how much I have left. Now I have a ton of brown because I didn't use it. But um, I had plenty, I had way plenty of threads. I had more of this than I should have had because it didn't show up as good on mine. Not that one, sorry, that one's showing through, but this one. It didn't show up as good. So on my acorns, see their acorns look real white here, but mine, my thread wasn't quite that white. See that basket's like real kind of white looking? And mine wasn't. You can see on my basket, it doesn't show up so great on the fabric. And as much as I wanted to, it does better in this light here. And so I made, and, my, and the acorns around here aren't light like that. The acorns around here, they're real dark. So I came back and did my acorns dark brown. So my acorns are real dark. And they're the satin stitch. And one of y'all said, messaged me and said, hey, I think you missed something. Um, please, anytime you think I missed something, it was where these satin stitches, I put them always in at the end. 
So anytime you think I've missed something, please let me know because I'm not that person to be, oh, no, I did not. Yeah, no, that ain't me. Please let me know uh, because if I miss something and I FFO it, I'm probably going to be balling. So I love this thread. I used the Sulky, um, I think I decided it was 4055 is the Sulky, the Sulky Blue. I like, I really wish I had a plum kind of, but I didn't. So this blue worked out great. I love it. I love these pieces. I love the specialty stitches. Um, the silk threads are super nice. Like I said, the kits are real affordable. They don't sell them to the LNS, so you have to get them straight from them. So that was kind of a long, but oh well. Boy, I have a big pile of a mess over here this morning. Lord have mercy. Woo! So these guys will be engraving. These guys will be the shares. But now I gotta see where I buried. Oh, Lordy mercy. Gotta slide that out from in here. I'm gonna have an avalanche. Huh. The shares from last week. So we had all the shares, all the fun shares from last week for the floss anniversary. So um, da -da -da. Halloween Eve here goes to Colette Arage. I hope I say y'all's name right. I always try to say people's names right. My poor sister's name was never said right our whole lives. So I hope I said her name right. Colette Arage, let me know your address. And y'all, if y'all ever message me and you don't hear from me, keep messaging me or message me on another format. Um, I have found where people's stuff went in a spam folder or I, it was in a little, uh, like a, like it did, I didn't know you, so it didn't put it all like on messenger and stuff. So just keep at me because I will, I, know, I always try to message people. So I'm not trying not to message somebody. Um, Sampler House by Blackbirds here. Sampler House goes to Patricia Simon. Patricia Simon, if you will um, get with me with your address, Sampler House goes to you. Let's see here. Frosty wanted to go home with Kim Heyman. Kim Heyman, if you will holler at me with your address. Frosty wanted to go home with you. Um, This ornament set, which this, like I told y'all, this dove and the Santa, but the dove makes me think of Santa Town, and I loved it in the Santa. Um, from Satsuma Street goes to Donna H. Donna H, holler at me for this ornament set from Satsuma Street. Summer, where are you at? Ah. Think Summer from Lizzie Kate goes to Diane Hahn. Diane Hahn, if you'll holler at me, thanks Summer, wants to go live with you. Summer 2020. Make sure I get the right one here. That's spring 2020, right? Yeah. Summer 2020? Yeah, this is the one. Okay, because on this, this is the one, because on the end it says spring 2020, but it really is the summer 2020. So, I have to be sure I get the right one. Summer 2020 goes to Rhonda Nord. It has so many beautiful things in here. Rhonda, if you'll holler at me, Rhonda Nord. The Ark, like my necklace, my beautiful Jeep Collins. I love me some Jeep Collins. Goes to Carolyn 121. Carolyn 121, if you will holler at me with your address, the Ark needs to come stay with you. And last of all, the spring 2020 issue of PNPS goes to Shirley Krakmeyer. Shirley Krakmeyer, I hope I say your name right. Um, holler at me with your address for the spring PNPS. So those are the shares from last week. This week we will have, um, I finished Lizzie Kate's Treat Time and the Drawn Thread Welcome Autumn. If you're interested in treat time, use the word treat. If you're interested in the drawn thread, welcome autumn, use the word autumn. So treat or autumn. And um, those will be for next week. 
I think that's everything. I'm sure I've forgotten 10 things that I'll remember the minute I get off of here, which usually what happens to me. Um, the minute I get done, I'm like, oh, dang, I forgot to say. So if I forgot to say, maybe I'll remember it next week. Um, Y'all, look at this big mess I done made over here. Lord have merciful goodness. Woo, yike. Usually I don't make that big a mess when I do this, but man, oh man. Um, but I will get off of here and so y'all can go um, have a happy Friday, have a great weekend, and um, enjoy your stitches. Bye.